Ready. Give me the signal one. Welcome to Portledge Puck Drop here on Portledge Athletics. I'm your host, Daniel Shalom. Today, the Portledge Panthers boys hockey team hosts the Flyers of Chaminade at Beaverdam Winter Sports Club in Locust Valley, New York. The Panthers come into today with a record of 1-1. One one. Portledge lost their last game away at Del Barton 6-2. Here to talk about last game and preview tonight's game is Jack Jusko and Fritz Ross. Guys, how are you doing today? Doing great. Super excited for the game today. Yeah, great to be here and looking forward to tonight's game. So let's walk through the season a little bit so far. First game, a win on the road. Second game, a loss on the road. What's the expectation going into today, first home game of the season? Well, coming off the first win at uh, Princeton Day, super exciting, kind of a good test for us. And then tough loss at Del Barton, that was their home opener, but looking to prove ourselves and get a good rivalry win today. Yeah, I think it was it was a good way to start the season, right? You always want to start with a win, and it was a new new group of guys, so we kind of were just figuring each other out, and it felt good to get the win. And then we go into Del Barton with high hopes, trying to beat a uh, highly ranked team, and you know we ended up coming up short, but uh, I think we played well, and you know we have a chance to prove ourselves tonight against Shamanov. So we talk about the new group, also new coaching staff. Can you guys talk a little bit to not only the team chemistry, but the transition the program's gone through with new coaching staff and younger players? Yeah, especially with the younger players, we have a, it's really a fresh breath of air compared to last year with a lot of seniors, a lot of young guys. So I'd say less of a hierarchy, but uh, with the coaching change, it's been nice. I mean, Rick did a great job with the program, but having Brock uh, promotes a little bit more creativity on the uh, individual side. So it's nice to see that. Yeah. Um, and I think I, we all, we all really appreciated Rick, but uh, you know, Coach Brocko has been amazing as well. And uh, for the first two games of the season, I think that uh, from a player standpoint, uh, there's a lot of freedom on the ice. Uh, he allows us to kind of be as cre creative as we want. And, you know, if we, if we make a mistake, he's not too hard on, uh, on the individual. And uh, I think uh, from a chemistry stand standpoint, we're all very close. We all hang out. We all uh, talk a lot in school, and we've been around each other, you know, almost every day. So that transition is onto the ice, and the chemistry has been amazing. Fritz, can you talk to us a little bit about stepping up now as the starting goalkeeper after uh, Jake Anderson for the past couple of years? What's that transition been like for you, and how are you leading this team in the net? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Jake did a phenomenal job. It was a ton of fun to watch him, and he was great. But uh, it's definitely a big step up and it means a lot to me and with all the young guys it's been a ton of fun playing watching them play and uh, honestly I'm just having a ton of fun finding some confidence and enjoying games and Jusko what are you expecting today Chaminade home opener another team on Long Island right. wanting to prove it in front of the home crowd what's going through your mind I expect a lot of energy from the very beginning uh, hard on pucks and I, I think that uh, you know finishing checks uh, you know moving the puck skating fast I, I think that you know, we're all very antsy to, to get out here and prove ourselves, especially against another team on Long Island. You know, we play Chaminade, and I think that's the only other team we play on Long Island. So it's a chance for us to prove ourselves against the community around us, and I, and I think that it's also, it's also our first home game. Um, and so we want to show uh, our supporters what we're made of and, and go out there and get a win. You know, one of the few open rinks, outside rinks, Beaver Dam, what's the atmosphere like for both of you guys over the past couple of years, and what are you expecting tonight? I mean, just over the years, it's been great. You warm up, you see everybody coming in. And uh, I mean, at least I know the rivalry team always thinks it's like their winter classic. So you always want to take it to them. You want to show them why it's your house. And it's just a ton of fun seeing everybody, low boards, a lot of energy. Yeah, and I think everyone dreams of playing at an outdoor rink when they're little. You know, you watch the NHL winter classic and uh, it's exciting. Um, it, it's definitely a little bit different transitioning from, you know, playing most of our games indoors, but it's always fun to get outdoors, and uh, it's a great challenge. Thanks, guys. Best of luck tonight. We can't wait to see you. When we come back, we're going to send it to Beaver Dam Winter Sports Club for Portledge Hockey. It's me, Daniel Shalom, and George Mercier with the calls the Portledge Panthers take on the Chaminade Flyers. We'll have more special content with Fritz and Jack at the first intermission, along with a special Portledge Panthers report. You're not going to want to miss it. This has been Portledge Panthers Puck Drop on Portledge Athletics. Welcome back to Portledge Hockey here on Portledge Sports. It's the Portledge Panthers up against the Chaminade Flyers. What a game. We are 
prepping for this one to be. It is gonna be a great matchup. The Panthers coming into this one, one and one on the season. And they are looking to make a statement here tonight. Chaminade coming in with big aspirations, but last time round, it was all Panthers. Panthers looking to get that going in this game once again. We'll see if that is meant to be or if Shamanad can play. Devil's advocate and end up winning this game. We'll just have to wait and see. Team's just about getting started, getting ready to go. And it should be a great matchup here for Beaver Dam. Three officials here on the ice. It is getting very cold out here, but the cold is not going to stop us from getting this game started. Should be lots of fun getting ready for a great matchup. Joined alongside our freshman commentator, the first new media club member. What are you seeing in this game? Well, uh, as of last game, it looks like we might uh, take the win here, but uh, it's going to be a tough game. It definitely will be a tough game. Portland is looking to get their first win of the season here at home. It is their home opener. First time here at the dam all season. They'll be here throughout the winter, but looking to get off with the bang. Last time, the Panthers and the Flyers played. It was all Panthers, five to one. The final score, we'll see if they can get that again. With, of course, 15 minutes here on the clock. We are just getting ready to go. So happy you are with us here on this cold evening from Beaver Dam. We just saw the girls team absolutely destroy Rye Country Day, nine to nothing. Both teams getting riled up. It's a great atmosphere. If you look around here, and we'll see with our camera, there are fans all around this ice. Everywhere. This is a big matchup. People have been anticipating this matchup, and we are looking forward to a great game. Lots of, of players scratched for this Panthers team this time round. TJ Brodsky not in the lineup, Tucker Orton not in the lineup as well. And it will be the starting goaltender, Fritz Ross. Both fans getting loud. We're gonna hear that a lot throughout this game. Both teams think that they can battle, be a dominant force. Who's it gonna be? We have the best seed in the house. So sorry that you can't be here, but glad that we can bring it to you here on Portland Athletics. The starting vibe for your Panthers. It's a great group of guys. It is gonna be Rocco along with Terranova, called Jeffrey, and we are ready to go here from Beaver Dam. This is gonna be an exciting game. The puck has dropped, fans getting loud. Shout out, are gonna start with the puck. Panthers love to get off to a hot start. They lost their last game, one on the road at Princeton, but then dropped in their last game, six to two. Looking at change that culture, Jeffrey on the boards. This is gonna be a hard physical game. You're gonna see it all game long. Jeffrey right side, centers the puck to Terranova. Now leaves are called, called already drafted along with Terranova to the Midwest League. Jeffrey holding, he's gonna center back to Bronco. Bronco the backhand, pass shot! It is saved right side. Still working on the inside, called. Puck moving very fast shot, and it'll be a goal immediately! James Jeffrey! What a goal! And it is one to nothing for the Panthers within 20 or 42 seconds of play. Already showing what they can do. It's Portland one to nothing. What'd you see there? Well, it appears that uh, Portland is clearly already the dominant force in this game. They broke out very well from that uh, starting face off and it just went their way from there. So Goose James Jeffrey gets the Panthers on the board already. 42 seconds into this game. Shawnee not a good one, a fast response, but the puck is just moving so quickly for the Panthers. Sanzabrino on it now for the Panthers. He's gonna lead them out. He leaves it, here they come. Down the ice, Jusko's shot is saved. 
Orton on it. Now in the corner, once again, Santa Brito, right side. Puck is moved over there by Schiavero. Now down low, puck is loose. It's gonna fall to Chauvin on it. That's gonna be a triple tripping penalty coming up on Jack Jusko. Some early trouble here for the Panthers. 13.42 left to go, and it will be a flyer power play coming up. So Jusko is going into the box at 13.42, a minor for tripping. Crowd is loud, the energy is amazing. Flyers looking to respond quickly. Let's see if they can do it. Off the draw, they are gonna win it. Holding at the line, shot cross ice. Stick was lodged there for Nick Romano. He's gonna get it back, called working in the corner. And this one comes out off the glass and it will fall. On it there is Brocco, he's gonna win it. Brocco, a really shifty player, a start for this team. His dad also the coach of the team. Called working inside and this one's gonna fall out. Flyers have it, this could be the opportunity. Saved by Ross. That's a big save from Fritz Ross. Keeps his Portland lead. There's been lots of action only two minutes into this game. A minute 10 left on the power play for the Flyers. Portland have done a good job so far besides that one chance. Let's see if they can keep it going. Atmosphere and intensity is high. Skipped up the boards. They were looking for Weidenbach. They couldn't find him. Here come the Flyers once again. 45 left to go on Jusko's penalty and the Flyer power play. Here could be an opportunity for the Flyers inside. Shot is saved by Ross. He's going to cover. Oh, there's some fighting in front of the net. Things getting physical. And things very loud here at Beaver Dam. That's how we like it, though. So there's gonna be 33 seconds left to go on Just Go's penalty. Puck back in play, the Flyers win it off the draw, right side. Now to the middle, it is a nice block there. Portland's coming out with it, here they come. Weidenbach picks out his teammate. Skiabara gets checked into the boards, still working down below. Schiavara getting into it. Now the Flyers are gonna take it out. Thrown up ice, will it be? Rossi! Another big save, he's gonna make two breakaway saves. The penalty is over, teams are at even strength. Fritz Ross stepping up big so far for these Panthers, keeping their lead. Panthers trying to work it out of their own defensive zone. Throw cross ice. Comes off to Santa Brino. His shot in his glove been saved and covered up. It'll be an offensive zone face off for the Panthers. The Flyers uh, had a few opportunities there, but they weren't able to capitalize. And it's things like this that could cost them the game. So we'll see what they can do here with 11 minutes left in the first period of play. And overpowered there was Brody Ort. Flyers take it off the draw. Now in the defensive zone, Portland needs to work out. Terranova with a nice play, he chases. Offsides, warning is up, so Portland has to leave the zone. Here come the Flyers once again. Got beat here last year, five to one, trying to change that story. They've had good opportunities so far. Santa Bruno breaking down left side. He's gonna stop. He's gonna swing it around. Now in the middle, couldn't get anyone there. 
This one's gonna fall all the way back to Reese Barnett, and he's gonna reorganize the offense, playing it up ice. Portland able to clean it up, called on it now in the defensive pairing. As that one was almost lost, and now referee is gonna call time. So another face-off here in the offensive zone for the Flyers. They've been trying to get it going. As now to come out, here come the Panthers once again. Looking for their second goal after Jafray got them on the board. It's going to be an opportunity for the Flyers. Working down ice. Broke it up. Still working, Panthers looking to get it going. Here they come, Godsell right side. Checked on the boards. He comes in as a late scratch. So here comes Schiavera into the zone, makes a couple moves, Schiavera. It is broken up. Play has not stopped in a long time, 9-10 left to go in this period of play. Working behind the boards, here could be a shot, Skivar holds. He's gonna play it around the boards, finds Jufre, puck is taken from him, Flyers trying to break out. The shot, it is wide, and here comes Ironbender. A big player, the junior, loves to be a leader on the team, standing about 6'2". Throwing into the zone. There to fetch it is Schiavara. And Portland have to work themselves up once again. Play's gonna be whistled for an offsides. Face off coming just outside of the Portland offensive zone. With 8.28 left to go, make sure to stay with us at the first intermission. We have some special content with Fritz and Jack. They're not gonna wanna miss. And then in the second period, Tucker Ord is gonna come and be our special guest commentator. Barnett gives a little look to the crowd. Barnett and Bodium, the defensive pair on for the Panthers right now. Portledge winning it in the offensive zone. Flyers just trying to get out. So many fans packed on these boards here tonight. Here come the Flyers. Looking for it right side. Ross has been great in this game. Kept the Panthers in this. Being in there was Sanzabrino, and the Flyers are gonna stay with it. One timer saved by Ross. Another one, things getting physical on the boards, and now the Flyers have it again. Saved by Ross once again, and he is gonna cover up a great couple of saves. And some chirping going on now between these two sides. They do not like each other by any sense of the mean. A great couple of saves there by Ross. Yeah, uh, Ross seems to be a very big contender in keeping this Portledge lead here today. Last time these two teams played, it was all Portledge really no worry on goalie Jake Anderson, who is behind the boards now for this team. But Ross doing a great role, stepping up and filling the hole like we showed you in the pregame. And ref is going to say, I believe there's a Portledge power play coming right up. It seems like the uh, Chaminade player uh, carried the puck for too long, so that'll be the penalty. Hand pass on Chaminade, two minutes. A power play for the Panthers. They'll have the opportunity. They're gonna send out Bracco Terranova called, along with Weidenbach and who else? but Eric Holt. A face-off, it is gonna be won by the Panthers. They'll throw left side, looking to step into the lane, Terranova, his shot is blocked. Comes out to Cole, two draft picks already on the team. 
Brocco sends it across. Now the shot, it is wide there by Weidenbach. No seniors on the ice. It is tipped over the bar, called shot. Still staying with it. Here are the Panthers once again, left side. And in the middle, open net, there it was. Weidenbach didn't release it fast enough. A minute 25 left to go on the Panther power play. Brocco has it. Still holding at the top of the ice. Brocco leaves it. Brocco once again from Weidenbach. Brocco shot. It is safe. Puck still in play. But they're going to whistle it. Now some pushing and fighting. Iron Bender behind the net. He's getting into it. Iron Bender if, uh, getting shoved around. Let's see if any penalties will be called here. Uh, possibly cross check on Portlich. But. Could be lots of emotions flaring high. Fans getting into it. We'll see what the referee gives. So it is going to be another flyer player going into the box. It seems as if they're going to give double minors here, right? Uh, yes. So it'll be a five on three for right now, unless Portlich players go. So it'll be a four on three. Four on three. Four on three. Should be. In the Panthers' favor. If they give the penalty. Yes. Toes freezing. It is very cold out here tonight at Beaver Dam, but this is so entertaining. I haven't even thought about it once till we hit the break. Indeed. We'll see what the referees dish out here for penalties. The crowd packed here at Beaver Dam. Love to see the support for the Panthers. So it will indeed. They're going to take the Chaminade player out of the box. And they're going to throw Einbender in there. It so looks like they might re be removing the Flyers captain from the game. Oh, he's getting ejected. Flyers captain ejected from the game. He is done for the night. So the Flyers captain, like you said, very good analysis there. He's ejected on sportsmanlike conduct. He is out of the game. Chaminade, I'm not happy about that whatsoever. That's their star right there. So we'll see what is given, but... It appears that it will be a four on four. Does seem like that as of right now. Flyer captain ejected from the game. He was making a lot of hand gestures over there in the box while the things were happening. And also while he's coming off the ice. Not sure why he did get ejected, but probably some profanity that he was screaming around. <laughs> now will be face off left side for the Panthers. Four on four hockey. There'll be a five minute major on 21 for Shawna. So the Panthers will have a three minute power play after Ian Bender's time expires. <laughs> what a sequence of events. So it will be Einbender in the box for two minutes time. And with the ejection, it'll be a five minute major on number 21 for Chaminade, turning into a Panther power play. Oh, it looks like it might be after. a four on three here. A second flyer put in the box. We shall see, still waiting on the referee's decision, but it does seem as if we have two flyer players in the box as of right now. And we are just waiting to see what's happening. Daniel Schall with you here at, at Beaver Dam. Quite the spectacle to see tonight. What a great matchup. Indeed. This is a very confusing sequence of events right now. So we'll play, see where this goes. Play being delayed heavily. Clock hasn't moved in about three, to three, four minutes now. It, it appears so. So they will play a four on three for about two minutes. And then it will be a five on three? I don't want five, five, on, five on four. Five, five on, on four. four. So here we go. Portland on the power play. They'll have a power play for five minutes just with each team getting one player back after two minutes. They're moving fast. Jeffrey looking for his second. It is broken up. Jeffrey still on it. 
It's gonna come back to the point. Now, Santa Brito shot, it is saved and gloved. Fans getting riled up here tonight, yelling at the refs, but that's normal in hockey. Normal in hockey, players, a lot of former players here for Portland, along with Chaminade fans, not a far drive for them at all to get here and see this game tonight. Second unit on for Portland, Brocco Romano, along with Weinbach. Now, down low, Brocco steers it right side, shot, and it will be saved. Puck still in play, another shot, and that one comes off the glove by Brocco. He's been a really good up and coming start for this team, Donnie Brocco. Uh, a minute 10 until we get five on four, but for now, four on three. Brocco shot, saved. The rebound is still in play. Falls to Cole. Cole. Weaving inside. Leaves it off for Weidenbach. Weidenbach looking, trying to center for Cole. Oh no! What's gonna happen here? Breakaway! Score! It's a Charmina goal on the shorty. After they got their captain ejected, they've come back and it's a one to one game on the four on three short and a goal as Chaminade. So what appears to have happened here is the Chaminade player got out of the box and he just got the puck and got on the breakaway and ended up scoring. Seems as if that would happen because that was from the original penalty before all the altercation happened, he was out of the box. So now we have four on four for 38 seconds before Portland gets back on for three minutes. Chaminade tying with 5.17 left to go in this first period of play. What did you see in that sequence of events? How did how did Shamana get get right there and beat Ross? He's big, been big in this game, but well, there. it appears that he tripped him up, went top shelf, and he just couldn't get to the puck in time. We have a game on our hands here at Beaver Dam. You're not going to want to look away whatsoever. Can Portland respond before the end of the period? Fans getting loud, getting rowdy. Ski bear left side. 10 seconds till the man advantage for Portland. Weaving his catter up. Barnett's pass gets broken up. And Portland is going to have to retreat. Portledge now on the power play for three minutes time after the captain getting ejected. San Zabrino shot is blocked. Right side. Puck behind the net. San Zabrino looking. Terranova on now for the Panthers. Terranova scanning. Right side. Call. And it is off the top of his glove and into the back of the netting for a Panther faceoff. Well, it appears that the goalies have been huge parts of the Flyers and Panthers team today. Yes, no doubt about it. Ross coming up big three times within the first five minutes to maintain the lead, but finally got beat. Nothing he could do there, just a clean opportunity buried at top shelf. Puck back and play, shot, shot. It was a slapper by Cole, but it's covered up. This is gonna end up in a penalty for sure. And this was some big pushing and fighting after the play. Seems like the refs aren't actually gonna dish out anything, but it'll be a face off left side. Tension's running high. So as of right now, it's a five on four in favor of Portledge for another three and a half minutes. Yeah, two and a half. Oh, two and a half, my bad. No good, no problem, all good. Let's see what the Panthers have in store still. Working on the right side boards. In the middle, Calm gets it back. Working on the power play. Now, left side, looking for called again. They couldn't find him. Einbender back on the ice after his penalty. Called into the middle. San Zabrino passes it over to Einbender. Einbender right side. Einbender still holding. 
being pressured in the corner. Chaminade win it back, just looking to clear it down. They already scored a shorty, they want another one. Oh, sorry, not a shorty, even strength, but right out of the right out of the penalty box. So nearly that. 310 left to go. A minute 30 on the Panther power play. Ein Bender big hit. And now there's gonna be a call going against the Panthers. It's gonna be interference. Ein Bender will go to the box again, two times in the first period so far. He has some trouble containing his emotions, Max Ein Bender, and he'll be going to the box once again for two more minutes. That'll scrub out the Panther power play, and it will be four on four for a minute 21. So four on four hockey, Jafre on it, working down, off sides. Face off by Jafre, <laughs> he's lost. And Shamanon will work down the ice once again. That puck is uh, out of play into the Panthers bench. It'll be a face off at center ice. Face off at center ice, puck back in play. With uh, 2.38 left to go in the period. 55 seconds till the Flyers go on their power play. Till, till then, four on four. Now right side, taken down in the corner there, was Weidenbach, he's up quickly. Brocco, trying to get something going, they turn it over, two on two for the Flyers, coming down the ice, right side. Shot is blocked by Skibaro, big defenseman. His brother did play on this team and now, they're gonna leave it up ice, trying to hit. Leidenbach couldn't find him. Portledge thinking that he shouldn't be able to grab it out of the crease, you know, cover it, and then play it back out. Should have been a frozen puck there, so they had to call it dead. It will we'll be a uh, face-off in the Portledge offensive zone. Three. Panther face-off. It is won by the Panthers, right side. Here come the Flyers once again. Thrown down ice. Barnett able to get it out left side. Flyers organizing themselves. Portland draw the penalty kill. Flyers have the man advantage for 30 seconds. Still there's one minute left. Oh, and a big takedown on the boards. Fans getting rowdy. Tensions running high. Flyers working themselves down, still on the power play. Weave through one, looking for the second opportunity off the post, and it's in for the Flyers! Score. It's a power play goal. And the Flyers are up two to one. Great goal, seven seconds left in the power play. They were able to capitalize on like their first one. So it is a Chaminade power play goal at a minute eight left in the period. You know, it seemed like Portage came out so hot. What happened? I don't know. I mean, after these back-to-back -back penalties, it just seems they weren't able to get things together. Puck was moving really fast when Jafre scored within 42 seconds, but it doesn't matter at this point. Portage is trailing one to nothing. They're being outplayed right now by the Flyers. They need a response. Maybe something before the end of the period. Here comes Brocco. Coming inside, looking for Jusko. The deflection, puck him in the middle. It'll be cleared off. 
gonna roll all the way back. 28 seconds left to go in this period of play. Brocco, dangles around one guy, trying to get a place. Leave it for Sanzabrino now, 15 left to go. In the middle, it is deflected wide, just go chasing for it, seven seconds. Could this be a last second opportunity? Three, two, one, save! Ross at the buzzer! Ross keeps it clean at the end of the period. And at the end of one, we have an entertaining game. It's the Flyers two, the Panthers one. We will be right back enjoying this first intermission with Fritz and Jack. We'll be right back. Welcome to the first intermission. I'm Jack Chesko along with Fritz Ross, and we're going to play a special edition of Portlidge Trivia. Dan, first question. All right, guys, get ready to go. First question, in what year was Portlidge founded? Pretty powerful. Bad marker. All right, reveal the answers. Both of you are incorrect. Oh. 1965 was the oh correct I, answer, so we'll stay at zeros to start out. All right, second question. Who won last year's Portlidge Bowl Award? It was a senior and it was a guy, or your two hints. What's the Portlidge Bowl Award for? It's like the person that embodies Portlidge as, as a whole, and it, it, it's given to a senior every single year. We need, I need a new marker department. All right, reveal. It was not either of those guys. <laughs> Who'd you say? It was, <laughs> Owen Ford. It was actually Mahan was the correct answer. Um, so still at zeros going into the third question. Rough start. Uh, rough start. Uh, next question for you. It pertains to the girls team. When was the last time the girls won the Wilma Championship? Oh. It was recent. Uh, oh, what's going on with this? What's going on? Put it on, put it on, put it on. Is this side supposed to be like this? Welcome back to Portland Hockey. Special guest in the press box, Tucker Ort. Thank you, know, you for being with us. You know, it's great to be here, folks. Uh, I'm just a big fan of Portland Hockey. I've been out for the season, and you know, I just can't wait to get back. Yo, Tucker, what'd you see in that first period? Why are the Why are the boys trailing one nothing right now? You know, we started off hot. We got a great goal right at the first shift. We got a few more chances, and we got some stupid penalties. We got too cocky, and you know, now we're, hopefully we can turn up again in a second. We shall see. It seemed like the Flyers were really effective on that power play. And just some stupid penalties indeed. We shall see how they respond. As now, working on the inside are the Panthers. You know, what do you have to do here? You know, just starting out once again, they got the goal within 42 seconds last time. How do you get a hot start here in this period? He's gotta get some shots on net. Just carry it up the ice and just can't make any more stupid mistakes, you know? 100%. We shall see if they can do that here in this game. A nice goal by Jeffre in the beginning, but a couple of back to back Flyers goals makes it a two to one game. Bodian's going to have to chase it. He flicks it back inside. Tucker, can you talk to us a little bit about the intensity of this game? It seemed very chippy out there in that first period. Yeah, you know, a lot of talking out there on the ice. I was just by the bench. You can hear just a lot of talking back and forth. You can just tell no one's happy with each other. No goal there. No goal. Yeah, We're wow. Call it dead. No goal. Looked like it went in after the whistle. Shaman, I'm not happy about that whatsoever. It will be a no goal call, and it will stay 2-1. to one. What do you have to say about those uh, saves by Fritz Ross in that first period, keeping in, keeping us in the game? He's been, he's been playing great. He's had a lot of uh, odd man rushes on him. He saved him. Two unlucky goals, nothing he can do, both odd man rushes. You know, I trust Fritz to stay out, stay uh, in his head and play well. Getting physical here on the boards. Right side, Barnett's going to have to chase it. And now it's flicked up. Flyers trying to reset. Portland's trying to get their offense going once again. Right side, here come the Flyers. Shot on net. Ross puts it in the air. Puck still flying around. And there's a penalty up and coming on the Panthers. Delayed penalty. 
Goalie goes to the bench. Flyers are gonna have the extra man on until Portland's touch up. You know, if we wanna keep, if you wanna win this game, we cannot keep getting these penalties. It will be now, the Panthers will touch up, and there will be a two minute penalty, and a power play for the Flyers coming once again. It is going to be on Barnett for two minutes. See what the call is. To be cross checking. Cross checking. Yeah. Can't be doing that in this high intensity game. Definitely not. So, two minute penalty on Barnett for cross checking at 13.05. This is a big face off here. Let's see what the Flyers have in store trying to get their second power play goal. Hey, you play. Shaman, I'm working it down behind. Jeffrey is there. He's going to try and clear. He will. And Good clear from Portledge. It's a big four check here. They're gonna have to reset once again. Working down on the right side. Portland's looking for another clear. Jafray working, trying to get it out. Now they will. Tucker, talk to us about this young core of this team. Seems like half these guys are freshmen or, or sophomores. You know, uh, I'd say some of our best players are our youngest players. They, they got the grit. They got the talent. They're a little bit scared out there in some chippy games, but, you know, that's just what comes with being young and playing at this high level. 100%. Portland now attacking while they have to kill off. 55 seconds left on the penalty. Brocco makes... Oh, made, Beautiful made spinorama. Disappear. And now oh, wow. Middle, oh, wow. Santa Brito. It is blocked. He still has it, though. Portland attacking. Santa Brito again gets blocked in the lane to be an odd man rush. The Flyers are going to This just time. shows the advantage that Portland has over the other team. We're on a penalty kill and we're dominating them in the offensive zone. Here they come again. Cole makes a man miss shot. See. How about Brody Orts on the ice? Now this one comes off of a Chaminade player. 20 seconds left on Barnett's penalty. Here come the Flyers making the one last push. A nice poke check there. Great play Ort. by Brody Ort. I'm Tucker, only the mother. What do you have to say about that? Brother on yeah. the team. You know, he could have controlled it a little better, maybe gotten a better ice, but it was a good play. Oh, there's gonna be a penalty now. Coming up on the Flyers, I believe too many men on the ice, and there's gonna be a Portland power play coming up. That's exactly what we need, folks. So, it is too many men on the ice, 11.05 left, and the Panthers are gonna go on the power play right after the Flyers just got off of it. It's necessary that Portland scores, scores a goal here. Let's see what they no can do. No one can't find his equipment. I told him to take yours. He goes, I won't. Oh. Here they come. Off the draw. Terranova doesn't win Gotta it. win that face off. But Brocco keeps it in. Now to Cole. Right side, Weidenbach. Now called once again. Leaves it for Brocco. Back to Weidenbach. Brocco! Oh, and it's not in the net. A last second desperation save. Einbender gives it back to the point. Cole. We seem to be doing that a lot, just waiting to shoot and taking too long. Agreed. Called at the top. Finds Weidenbach. Looking to set it up with Brocco once again. At the top of the point, Brocco. Now across ice. They had it over there with Weidenbach. For Portland, you're going to have to reset. 120 left on the penalty. Coach Brocco does not look too happy with his power play. Coach Brocco and Kid Brocco, Donnie Brocco on the power play as well. Here they come once again, three on two. Weidenbach is going to set it up. Left side. Brocco. He's up for called. Called shot. It is deflected up to the netting. Ten minutes left to go evenly. Tucker, what did poor Lucia do to take, uh, get back in this game and maybe take the lead? We need a momentum changer, that's all we need. They, the Flyers seem to have all the momentum. We need to win this face off, get a puck on net and score. We'll see if they can do that. Face off is won. Romano throws it left side to Skibara. Now, or right side. 
He's working behind the net. Second power play unit on for the Panthers. Jafray back up top, slap shot, and is steered away. Beautiful play. Working once again, and Skiwar cannot keep it in the zone with 30 seconds left. Portland have to work back in. Jafray calling for the puck. He wants it. Shot is going to be over off the glass. It's, it's over wide. It's a bad shot. Still working for it. Jafray almost had it. Now he gets it. Comes back out to the point. Stayed in. And this will come out of play. And that will probably do it with 10 seconds left on the penalty. Oh, big. That's a penalty. That should be boarding right there. And now it's getting physical on the ice. Romano grabbing over top. We already see the Flyers. Captain got ejected in this game, Tucker. Things are really getting high. Uh, these refs seem to be very one-sided. You know, I could have a biased opinion, but I'm not liking these calls from this referee. I agree with Tucker. So they're going to call a penalty here on, I believe, both sides. So it will be... No, they're just going to call it on the Panthers, Tucker. It is just going to be on Romano for holding. And this is exactly what we don't need. So it'll be four on four for a singular second, and then it will go to a Flyers power play five on four. Faceoff is won by the Flyers. They're on the power play. It'll come out, though, and Portland is just going to have to kill another one. It seemed as if it should have been originally boarding on, or on the right side, but the referees went with holding on Romano. Ben screaming about something there. I'm not sure what. As now the Flyers work it back into the zone. He seemed to have a little fumble there at the point. Portland still working for it. Right side in the corner. Into the Jeffrey middle. Jeffrey takes it up. Jeffrey left side. You ready as a goal in this game? Beautiful Houston. pass. Tried to do the saucer there for Bronco, but it wasn't there. Jeffrey now in front. Broken up. Just go on it. His shot is wide, goes through the legs of the goaltender, and Flyers are going to have it once again. This is what I mean. Portland seems to only take control when we're on a man down. You just can't get that momentum when we're on the man up. One minute left on the Flyer power play. This will come all the way out. Seven fifty left in the game. Forty-five seconds left on the power play. Called with a nice hit there on the boards. Takes him down and wins the puck. Terranova shoves it all the way down, was looking for Weidenbach. No icing because of the penalty. And Portland's gonna have an opportunity shot and is saved. Skibera saves it there. And, or Skibera shot it, it was saved. 20 seconds left now on the power play for the Flyers. Romano anxiously awaiting to get out of the box, right side. And this will be whistled down. Six seconds left to go, 7-11 left in this game. Tucker, what have you seen so far in this game? You know, I'm not too happy with how we're playing, but you know, there's always, there's always a period and a half to go. I think we still got this. 2-1, it's only a one goal lead. We're doing well offensively on this penalty kill. I think we've had more chances than they have on this penalty kill. More you know, opportunities to come indeed. Quick shot off the draw is wide. And the penalty is now over. Team's at full strength. Katerov on it left side. He chases, he gets there. Now behind Number the 12 net. seems to be hurting on the Flyers. Now in front, Katerov trying to get something. And it's going to come out of the zone for an offside. And now some pushing after the play. Tucker, talk about the atmosphere here tonight at Beaver Dabs. Packed all around the boards everywhere you look. Well, here in the uh, announcer's booth, we don't seem to be in the right area. We're surrounded by Flyers fans. But if you uh, look to your right, there are, seems to be tens to hundreds of Beaver Dam Portland fans. We are indeed in the wrong section. We've been getting heckled nearly all game, but that's just a part of it. Oh, what a hit Big there hit on from the Katarov. You can hear that reverberate around the arena. That's an interference. No call. It's a slash. 
Things are getting very chippy out on the ice. Two slashes in a row. Let's see what Einbender has in store. Oh, what a hit! An open ice. Jaffre grabs it. Tension's running really high here. Einbender again, he's known to get physical. Oh, that has That's to be a, a penalty. Blatant penalty. That, that should be, be a kicked out of the game for that one. A clear cross check into the board. It's from behind. Ice. From behind. Shamnak captain already got ejected in this game. And we shall see what the call is. It's going to be on number 10. It seems as if it might have been on Jeffrey. He seems in pain, but it was not. We do not actually know who it was. We'll check the tape after, but Tucker, should that have been more than a two minute minor right there on that call? 100%, that's a dangerous hit. His head's down, he hasn't gotten the puck yet. He's facing his back. Whenever your back is facing towards the player, you should never be hit, and that should always just be either a five minute major or even an injection. So, with 5.49 left to go, Portland, you're gonna try and score on the power play. Here they come, Brocco, left side. Called holding at the point, trying to set it up. They have their number one unit on the ice. Called, Weidenbach, back to Called. Brocco, left side, cross ice, the shot, it was wide. And they're gonna say comes off of the netting for Portland's face off left side. We were expecting an easy game, and it's not what we got. A big culture shift from last year's. You guys beat Shaman on five to one last year. It seemed pretty easy this time, not so much. You know, it's all about your mindset going into the game, and I don't think our team had the right mindset. We were all giggling and laughing in the locker room. I'm sure the other team is sitting there in silence, just getting ready. Just goes to show how big mindset can affect a sporting event. Could agree with you more. A minute 15 left to go on the power play. Portland are gonna bring it up here. It'll be a point man, Weinbach, here he comes. Weinbach, your friend is right, brings it in. Throws it around the boards to Brocco. Brocco left side. Now cross ice, back into the middle, Jaffray. Beautiful forward. goal by James Jaffray, his second of the day. Second Everyone's the getting day. hyped for him over by the boards. It's exactly what Portland needed to get back in this game. What a goal by Jaffray on the one-timer. He slots it home left side, and Portland are right back in this game. It's completely silent here on the Flyer side now. All silence over here. Nothing the Flyers can say about that. As it's a two to two game here with 4.47 left to go. Portland taking advantage of the opportunity. Jaffray getting his second of the game on the power play. Now you just need to go right back out there and score again. Tucker, we talk about that momentum shift. Is that that in this game for the Panthers? Uh, I think it'll be a big switch. We got little Nicky Romano, probably half his size, is going out there and hitting kids. I think we got all the energy back. We seem to be skating a lot quicker, a lot more jumpy. These guys are getting in their head. They're trying to hit us every single play. Does I think, go down for an icing? I think momentum's back in our favor. 4.16 left to go in this game. Jafray has been such a huge player so far. Tucker. Question outside of the ice. What's your favorite class right now? Favorite class? I'd say IB Economics with uh, Mr. Owen Williams. He's an amazing teacher. Uh, couldn't have said it better myself. Gonna, I did say it myself. Are you going to miss uh, Roger LaFleur, Astrophysics? Oh, I will miss it greatly. It's probably one of my favorite classes I've ever had. Very easy going. While I was still learning a lot, you know. Couldn't have asked for a better class as a senior. No doubt about it. No do to boot it. Things getting physical once again. This one played back into the offensive zone. Counter off on it. He's known to use his body. Now behind the boards. This one is going to fall up to Barnett. He gets checked on the boards. And now that's that, another hit that from behind from these guys. This will come all the way back out. 
to Brocco. Brocco makes his man miss, and he's gonna take it up ice in just a second. Here it comes. Some sloppy play there. Portland's turning over. Opportunity for the Flyers. Broke it up. Brody. Players falling to the ice all over the place. Now back into the offensive zone of Chaminade. Here they come. Here's Jusko. Brock on his left. He takes Good the shot. shot. And it is saved. You know, he had Brocko, maybe he should have hit him, but that was still a good shot. Got it right in the right spot. A good opportunity. And the new assistant captain, Jack Jusko. <laughs> It'll be a Portland faceoff with 2.55 left to go. And a 2-2 two two game here in the second period. Lots of twos floating around. Faceoff is going to be one. By Portland. Called on it. Throws it left side for Brocco. Brocco tried to fire into the middle. Didn't see who was there first. And now called being pressured. Gives it Fumbling away. Fumbling too much. Still working right side. Chaminade have it in the offensive zone. Portland are going to take it right back. Saucer pass up ice. Looking for Weidenbach. No icing as it was tipped. And now Portland Good four the check. offensive zone. Brocco. Thrown up ice. Flyers opportunity. Off sides. Good call from the referee. Chopping up fans getting loud. But back to the matter is, Tucker. They haven't even won this game. What do they have to be loud about? No one knows, you know. They have all the energy, they're all this talk, but they won't be talking when they lose this game. Two to two, two minutes left in this second period of play. Make sure to stay tuned at the intermission. More special content with Fritz and Jack. Sorry, we had to cut short last time. There will be off ice time this time around though, so make sure to stay tuned for that. This one comes out of play, almost hit our trainer, Miss Mahoney. You don't want that to happen. She seemed very scared too. As it will be a face off, I believe, coming right outside of the Panthers offensive zone. Face off, it is won by the Flyers. That's and a trip. Down there Number nine on the Flyers. It's gonna be a power play coming up for the Panthers. This is big. Big face off here for Portledge. Some would even say it's the momentum decider. Definitely could be Einbender taken down at 147. Portledge making an interesting decision, putting a de leading defenseman on the face off. Shot quick off the draw by Weidenbach. Regrouping at the point. Portledge seems to be in full control. They will have the power play for the rest of this period. Win back by himself. Win back, couldn't get anything going there. You know, Tucker, new coach this season for the Panthers. What's that dynamic been like under new head coach Brocko? You know, last year was a lot more serious, a lot more straightforward. With Brocko, we get a little more, uh, what's the word? A little more family oriented, a lot more, uh, I'm, I'm blanking on the word, but you know, it's, it's a great, he's doing a great job so far. He's coached a lot of these guys before, so he didn't have to do so much. Uh, so many it, changes. Yes, exactly. See what Portland has in store. A minute 12 left in the period. All that will be on the power play. Still haven't been able to get a shot since that face off. Behind the net, called. Still holding. Left side. Now, Brocco. Brocco shot in his gloves. It's a beautiful shot by Brocco. 
Clock will stop with 49 seconds to go on it. As we here we have our Chaminade star, John Pappas, John Pappas here Chaminade. watching the game. He, he seems away. very happy to be watching the game. John Papp runs away with 50 seconds left to go in the second period. Highlight of the game. Face off, it is won by the Panthers. I always like to have a little fun here on the broadcast. And a big, big takedown on the left side of the board. And it seems one of the fans have been hit by the puck. Puck came way out of play, hit someone down on the other side. We hope they're okay. We do hope they're okay, and it will be 39 seconds left to go in the period. Romano on the faceoff. Can the young kid deliver for the Panthers? Puck back in play, it'll be cleared all the way down. We got 35 seconds to make a play here. Gotta get something big going. Here they come, Schemaro. He is gonna leave it off for Terranova. Terranova right side. Terranova working. Taking his time, trying to get the perfect pass. Only 15 seconds left. Terranova oh. gets, break, gets broken up. Still in the offensive Good save zone. by Terranova. Sam Good Debrino. block by Flyers. And that'll be the end of the second. Tucker, thank you so much. If you'd like, we'll have you on again in the future, maybe even in the third, who knows? Of course. But Portland's tied this game up. It is two to two at the end of the second. What a game we have in our hands. We'll be right back. Stay right with us. You're watching Portland Hockey. Have a lovely night, folks. Welcome to the second intermission. I'm Fritz Ross along with Jack Jusko, and today we're going to play a very special edition of Portlidge Trivia, Teacher Edition. G, first question, please. All right. Which faculty member recently got married? Oh. Huh. Has to be a new name. Oh, I don't know how to spell the new name. I can spell it. Answers? I know the old name. Fritz? Does get the point because he got the new name. All right. Thank you very much. Next question. What is the head chef's name in the kitchen? Is that a joke? You are both correct. <laughs> there we go. Two point spritz, one point jack. You ready for the next question? Absolutely. Yes, I'm ready. Which teacher has an espresso machine in their room? I'll even throw the first name in there. Don't reveal your answer until. Quad rod. Five, four, three. Answers. Fritz gets another point. Three, one, Fritz. Who was it? Roger LaFleur. Uh, see, I've never had LaFleur. Okay, Mr. Squad. Next question. What school did Mr. DeSimile De play Division One lacrosse? Give me that. Fritz is correct again. Four to one. Oh, I suppose. Should we continue just for fun? Let's continue. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. All right. For the fun, you know. Next question. Who is the lower school director? A lower? It's definitely not this, but that's a middle school. Answer. Wait. Oh. Can I change mine up? You can. You didn't show it. Is it Miss Simon or anything? It is not. The correct answer is Miss Long. Next question. I think go to the lower school. Who is the Portland Boys varsity soccer head coach? Oh. You gotta know this one. Keep it hidden. Hold on. No. No. So it's your correct with an incorrect oh, spelling. I'll give it to him, Jack. I love the answer. Maybe one day. <laughs> and for the final question. That'd be you ready? 
Mr. Owen Williams is from what country? Oh, give me that. Both of you are correct. What was the final tally? I lost count. Final six. tally, six to two. Six to two. Fritz takes a huge Great game, Fritz. Play. Pleasure. That was your second intermission show, Fritz. That was your second intermission trivia edition show. Thank you. <laughs>
Mr. Shalom right here, a phenomenal interviewer. And um, that's my piece. Roll Flyers. Thanks so much. Thank you. It is my great honor and pleasure to say that we have, I know it's loud in here, Trent, you're gonna have to deal with it, don't move it. Here, Trent, try now, try now, should we got Oh, yeah, it's back. That's better, okay. We had it too high on our board, but it is a great honor to say I'm here with Trent Medora. Can't get any better than that. Uh, Trent, how you doing today? I'm well, Dan, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm loving this game right now. Yeah, a lot of energy coming to this third period, uh, tied up. So we're basically starting from scratch here. 2-2 two -two game. Puck back and play. What have you seen so far in this game? I've seen uh, a lot of good movement from the Portledge uh, team, especially the Portledge power play, um, starting with Donnie Bracco. A lot of good breakouts. But uh, the Chaminade goalie has been playing exceptional this game. Oh, and there's a goal. Eric called. Trent, the magic of you brought the goal into the net. <laughs> there it goes. 18 seconds in. Paul gives Portland the lead, and the Chaminade fans have gone quiet. Yeah, a little flashback from last year when Eric Colt had a hat trick against the Chaminade team, so happy he can get another one. Cald gets the goal at 14.42. Trent, talk a little about, uh, you know, James Dufresne scoring 42 seconds in. 
Now, what's with Portland and scoring these quick goals early into the period? Yeah, it's a, it's a great sign early on in the season. Um, they had two away games to start off, but showing that they can deliver to the fans at home early on is uh, seems really promising. A nice save there by Ross. And Portland's just going to try and maintain this lead. A 3-2 game. They've been in this scenario before, but do you think that the attitude coming into this one, you know, beating Shaman by so much last year, kind of threw off the game plan coming into this one? Uh, it definitely could have. Um, it also could be the energy, the adrenaline coming from the first home game of the season in front of the fans. However, I think they've handled it well, and they are continuing to build each shift. Pass wide there, and Portland, you're going to have to reorganize themselves once again. Chaminade had it now coming down left side, three on two. That one has broken up a nice play there by Barnett. And things getting physical out there. Here comes Santa Brito. And there's going to be a penalty coming up on the Flyers. Yeah, it's a good job by Santa Brino drawing that penalty, making the defender play him and ultimately getting tied up. James Dufresne was driving hard to the net. Couldn't agree with you more, Trent. A very good play there. And now, Portland gets to go on the power play. Yeah, the, the power play has been great, as I've said. Hopefully they can convert their shots this time. The, the defenseman, Eric Hall, taking the face off. Surprising thing, you don't usually see that. I have not seen that in a while. Shot is immediately saved. Trent playing on this team last year. What's uh, what's it looking like this year from this Portland team? Uh, the young freshman from last year coming up and uh, building their skills. They're a lot quicker than last year. Uh, move the puck a lot quicker, shoot quicker. Uh, they're finding a lot of seam passes I've seen, which is just great. Getting the goalie moving the side to side on the power play. Up top, right side, Leidenbach. Stop, rebound it is saved, and it's still trickling around. Jafray trying to get a stick on it. Falls to Winnebach, nothing there. Here could be an opportunity. Jafray getting back, he's able to beat him out. It's a nice stick check there by Jafray. Here they come again. In the middle, looking. Falls to Jafray, now slap shot comes off the goaltender, falls to Jafray once again. Jafray left side. Plays it back to the point. Jafray in the middle, looking for someone, nobody there. There is now only a minute and 15 left to go on the power play. Portland's trying to get something going after getting an early goal in this period. Jafray behind the net. Sanders still looking. Wittenbach. Oh, the Michigan attempt from Wittenbach. He tried to get oh. it. That would have been sweet. In the middle again, it's a goal! Call two in three minutes! Wow! Again, he's working up for that hat trick again, it seems like. Call gets a goal two minutes after his first goal, and Portland are up four to two. Called said hi to his friends from the goals on the way, on the way to celebrate. <laughs> a good jinx indeed, uh, and now Portland are leading four to two. A lot of energy on this Portland bench now. A lot of energy in the crowd. What have you seen from Cald over the years? He's definitely developed into a high high player. And really good, getting a lot of interest from a lot of clubs. Yes, Cald has a rocket. Um, huge shot, very hard and heavy. Um, he makes great plays on the back end as well. That's that's his strong point. He he hits well. He breaks up plays well. He plays two on ones very well. And uh, yeah, I think he's going to be a really great hockey player. Couldn't agree with you more. Now for Portland, they can kind of be in the driver's seat. They're not chasing anymore after coming back from 2-1 down. Nice head man there from Bodie. Caterall 
Ruff chasing it. He's got it really loud in here. Yeah, that, that hurts. When Timber hits you, it hurts. I can attest to that. I've played against him. A shot is saved by Ross. Second opportunity is saved. What a save by Ross. Oh, he does not seem very good taking a second to get up. He's played his heart out in this game. Yes, he has a lot of key saves in this game. Keeping Portland in it. Keeping the energy high. Trem, what's that transition like for him coming in now as the starter after a guy who led this program, Jake Anderson, for a number of years? It's it's a tough role to fill, but he's been doing well. As we can see, he, he got a got a strong win his first game, and he's been playing well this season. He's playing very well. Anderson actually up on the bench now as a bench coach for the Panthers. Love to see that. And some line changes. Yes, we do. <laughs> If you had to pick one person as your favorite senior teammate from last year, who would it be? That's a bad question. I'm not answering that. <laughs> Everybody. Odin, Nikki Steves. And Anderson. Jake. Yeah, there's not many of us, so it's easy to keep those tight friends. Nikki Stevens, what a legend he was for the Portland program. Big hit on the boards. Portland's going to take it back out. Here comes Call looking for the hat trick. Call working down the ice. Offsides. Yeah, we have two players on Patrick Watch, James Frey and Eric Ald. We saw two players get a hat trick in the girls' game in their 9 0 victory. Who knows what can happen here with 11.40 left to go? Portland's trying to solidify and win their first home game of the season. Will you throw your hat in front of them? I don't know about that one, Trent. I did buy this from the Panthers end with Penny. It's invaluable to me. It's priceless. So I'm going to have to go with no. Although, I will give me a, a fake hat of congratulations if that doesn't even happen. Okay. <laughs> now working in the middle, puck comes off of the back of the net. Shamanad still have it in the offensive zone. That one steered away. Nice save by Ross. And now a whistle. You know, Trent, playing in front of this home crowd, we saw it last year in that last game. You guys unfortunately lost it in the end. But what was that feeling for you to score that second goal to tie against Wyoming Seminary here at home? That was a, a sick feeling. I'll, that's my vocab word for, uh, for that feeling. It was wonderful. I, I still think about it. I, I sometimes see, like, the picture in my camera when I'm going through and I'm like, wow, like that was a such a fun game. Unfortunately, we did not get it done in the end, but uh, I believe it was 27 seconds left they scored with, which was just unreal. Correct. Uh, very deflating, but we enjoyed last season. Uh, the crowd continued to grow. I, I'm, I'm really happy to see where it's at now because, you know, in the pandemic, the, the crowd wasn't as strong because we weren't really allowed to have fans every game. And uh, last year it grew, and this year it's growing even more to that pre, pre-pandemic pre level that it was. Panther power play coming up here after the Chaminade penalty. And two minutes now, 10.38 left to go. What can Portland make of this opportunity? I'd uh, keep looking to that bumper slot in the middle there. Um, that's been working for them pretty well. The Brocco has been hitting Wittenbeck on the, on the seam pass a lot too. So it would be good to see Wittenbeck's quick release in action. Quite the quick release. Now coming back down the ice, here's Cole looking for the hat. Here he comes, dishes it off. It'll fall to Ironbender. Now up top, Brocco shot save. It's a nice shot by Donnie. Back up to the top, and you can't come up with it. Here comes Jafray. He's on Hattrick watch, here he comes. Into the middle, Brocco keeps it alive. Now back to Cole, throws it left side, Brocco. Cole. There it is. That's the Hattrick there for Eric Cole. 
two years in a row. <laughs> That was a strike. Top right corner, and it makes it a 5-2 game. A nice shot through the screen by Eric Cald on his uh, back foot, but uh, it was still a missile. And that just shows how, how hard a shot is when he's uh, on balance. Shamanai fans not happy here. Not happy at all. <laughs> they shouldn't be happy. They don't deserve <laughs> to be happy right now. They don't deserve the satisfaction. They do not. Trent, just to recap, Cold scored at 14.42, 12.42, and now 9.41. Seems like he scores about every two to three minutes. He's like Tage Thompson from the Sabres the other night. <laughs> Five points in a period. It's his period. It's Portland's period. They're up 5-2. to two. Oh. Reese Barnett. <laughs> Portland. Shot nice save by Fred's Portland just starting to run around here a little bit, but uh, they, they did clear successfully, so that's that's good. And no change here for Portland either, so they will not have fresh legs. What do you make of that, Trent? Those three goals by Call. How does someone just, just do that? Three goals within five. You know, if he wants to turn it on, he can, clearly. So. Good for him. Giving this Portland team life here in the third period of play. The faceoff is won by the Flyers. Portland's going to regroup themselves with 8.30 left to go. Catterall. Now thrown up ice, it'll go all the way down. Ross wanted an icing, he won't get it. Here they come again. Odd man rush here for Portland. Oh, Call does not join the rush. Mm -hmm. Santa Reno now left side shot, it is wide. He wanted to spread the wealth, he didn't want to score again. So he didn't join the rush. I mean, why not have four in one period? <laughs> Just like Tage Thompson. Can't agree with you more. <laughs> Oh. Fred, just a general NHL question. Are the New Jersey Devils frauds or are they legit this year? I think they're legit. I've watched some of their games and you know, I'm not you know an expert scout, but I have been watching hockey, playing hockey for over a decade and they are legit. Oh! That was a great pass. A little backdoor tapping for San Sabrino, my line mate last year. San Sabrino gets Portledge to six at 7.25. Seems like Anthony's curse at, at, the, at the break really proving well for Portledge. So at 7.25 left in the period, San Sabrino gets the goal. Jafre. Looking for the dead angle shot. Didn't take it. Behind the net, nice feed. The Fentress. Fentress had a big hit in the first period. Getting some action this game. Love when Fentress gets some action. Yes, we do. And now it'll be a face off left side for the Panthers. 7 14 left to go, 6 to 2 game. Panthers nice with win. Four goals in oh. the third. That one comes off the top and that'll be out of play. It'll be another face off in the offensive zone. With 7.09 left to go. Another face win by Jafray. One, but Toronto can't come up with it. Here come the Flyers, holding behind the net, and they're going to come up once again. Portland wins it back. Jafre leaves it off in the corner. Things getting physical right side. Oh, 
Shamanad looks to clear, but does not. Skia Barrett with a large hit on Shamanad number 19. Yeah, what do you have to say about Ian Bender's play in this game? He's been physical. He's really set the tone for this Panther team. Yes, starting with that little scuffle in the first period. He, uh, he was smart. He, he let the Shamanad captain just go at him and maintained pretty fa fairly calm. He wasn't totally calm, but he gave the Portland team a nice large power play, five minutes. But I do like his role this year. Last year, he played forward for us, was a great forward. However, this year, he transitioned into the defensive role on this Portland team while still being the net front man in the power play, which is also unique. Very unique indeed. A lot of different roles for the Portland team. Portland down a man for the next two minutes with the penalty there on Paderoff. So, Chad, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but if Portlidge killed us, are they in the clear for this game? I, I think, now I don't like betting, but if there was betting on this game, I most likely would bet Portlidge. Portlidge money line. Port, I don't know what that means. That's how little I know about it, but I would bet money line, as you said, on Portlidge. Agreed. Fritz with a nice save there. Rolling around the net, Panthers try to clear. A minute 10 left to go in the Shamanai power play. It's an interesting strategy so far by Shamanai. They're kind of just rimming it on their power play, not keeping possession, and that results in a Portage clear. Comes all the way out. One minute left to go. Trent, you have any fun holiday plans this year for the winter break? Well, I am slightly disabled as of now, so I won't be doing all that much until I get my sling off, but when I do, I will be heading overseas somewhere. I love how mysterious you are. Thank you. Now left side, Flyers still holding, 30 seconds left on the power play. Cold has it, he's just gonna get it out. Here they come, Cold, right side. Now behind the net. Here come the Panthers once again. Left side, penalty is over. Panthers back at full strike. Here comes Cole. Cole, shot save. Nice little angle change there by Cole, looking to get the goalie off guard. Oh, there it is. Wow. Tear it over. Very unselfish play there by Cole. Now he has four points on the period, and James Jeffrey picks up another assist on the tear. Tanner, Terranova goal. Terranova scores, and Trent, this third period has really showed what this game was last year against the Flyers. Seven oh, yes. Two. Yes, I I can't say I saw it coming 100%, but I after that first goal, I, I saw what this Portland team could do or can do so early on, and if they if they maintained that all game, there, there would be no question. It really seemed like Anthony cursed them at, at the intermission. Uh, yeah. yeah. A huge chance. Sorry to say that you might have. We should have him out to every year. We should have him out to every single game, I agree. Yeah. So, 72 uh, game, four minutes, 10 to go. And Trent, you can basically say that game put the, or that goal put this game to bed. There's James, he just waved to me. Donnie said hi too. Hi. Maybe we'll try and get a post game interview with, with James or Donnie. They want a picture. I, I don't have a device. Let me see if I can get a picture of them. I'm gonna try really fast. Here we go. I got a picture too. I got a picture. We got the pictures. There it is. They look amazing out on the ice right now. Can't understate that. Yeah, and they've Donnie. been playing great in this game. What do you have to say about Donnie? What do I have to say about I like Donnie, Donnie a lot. A player. player and a person. Player and a person. I'm I'm around Donnie a lot around the the IceWorks rink and around Portlidge all last year. I was in his advisor and he's a really magical, magical person. I like him a lot. Um, he was very nice to me. We had a lot of good times in advisory, me, Jake, Ethan, uh, a lot of hockey players in that advisory. But he just likes to have a good time with the game, as you can see now, just dancing on the ice. He has some nice moves, so.
Trent, would you say that um, hockey's giving you a lot of bonds? You know, still friends with Jake, still friends with Odin. How has this Portland organization really, you know, helped you not only on the ice but as a person, as a whole? Yeah, um, I'm friends with everybody from the from the. Oh, Jake's calling they're, me. They're calling this game. This game's over. Wait, no. Hold on. We have Anderson on the phone. We can't hear him. Should I pick up? Pick it up. Call Matt. Let's see if Anderson picks up the phone now. He does. Trent, what's he telling me? He is telling me that they left the box two seconds early, so the, the goal does not count. Oh. So it is six to two. Six to two. That last goal by Terranova scrubbed. So it is a six to two game. Great insight there by bench coach Jake Anderson. We can't take him enough for that. It's like Pierre between the glass. You know yeah. I love Pierre. He is Pierre. We love Pierre. Six Pierre McGuire. Yeah, six two. Yeah, Trevor, would you say Pierre is your favorite hockey commentator? Hmm? Is Pierre your favorite hockey commentator? Either Pierre or Butch Goring. Butch Goring is pretty fantastic. For me, I have to go with Doc. Doc, Doc Emmerich. Emmerich. That's my okay, he's good too. Cross behind the net after the Portland goal was scrubbed because of the early departure from the box. Portland's also on the penalty kill right now because of that. A minute 15 on the Chaminade power play in the 62 game. Yeah, that happened last week. I was working the clock for the girls' game and. One lady left the, the box too early, and they were in the box again, and Portland scored, I believe, on that. I think you were right. They girls tried team. to blame it on me, too, actually. How dare they? The girls' team's having a great year this year. Just one nine nothing as well as can be icing. Trent, is your favorite celebrity still Dua Lipa, and has that changed? Yes. I like Harry Styles a lot, too. But Dua Lipa's pretty great. Surprised that you're not going to uh, Jingle Ball December December uh, 16th. Didn't it happen a few December, nights no, ago? December 17th. I th they might have rescheduled it. They res last time I looked, it was December 17th with Dua. I could be wrong. Don't get me excited. We'll look into that. We, w we went to a Dua Lipa concert. It was one of the best nights ever. Um, yeah, I, I saw her, too, in her car. She said hi to me. Maybe you promised Mahan. That was an amazing night at Dua Lipa, meeting Dua Lipa in the car. Can't get better than that. I'm just playing some filler here. Puck goes over the net. 2 I, 30 left to go. I actually ran like a quarter of a mile to catch up with their car, if you remember. I was there with you. That was, was a long run, but it was well worth it. No doubt about it. And this is going to be, what is it going to be, Trent? Too many men, it seems like. He's counting on his fingers. He might, he might have six or five or six or. Seems like it's going to be against Shamanad. Yep. Too many men in the ice, so that will cancel out. It'll be four on four. It'll cancel out the rest of the 15 seconds on the Portland penalty kill, and it will be four on four hockey until 23 seconds. And then after the 15 seconds, Trent Portland will have a power play for a minute 45. Yeah, well, it's looking good for them. That's for sure. Undubitably. Faceoff is won by Shana. They're going to work it out of their own zone if they can get out. Portland has really had so much good offensive pressure. It's oh. a big hit in the open ice. And the Flyers are going to cover. Sansa almost snuck around him. Portland power play now until about 20 seconds left in this game. Face off in the offensive zone for the Panthers. Romano on it. Romano wins it. And Portland is holding at the top. Left side. San Zabrino. Now left top, Skirara. San Zabrino again. Shot in his block. Comes back to Skibara. There, Santa Brino, why? Right side again. Now into the middle, is looking for it. 
nothing is there. And Portland has to retreat Terranova on it, and he'll play it. Oh, man, rush here. They can get up. To the inside. Nice. No goal. Nice effort. Santa Brino behind the net. Up to the top. Skivara. Blocked. Barron back in. Officially one minute left to go in this game. Terranova. Skivara calling for it. Looking. Right side. Ort gives it up top. The shot. It is up in the air. And it's going to come down behind the net. San Zabrino keeping the offensive pressure going. 20 seconds left on the Panther power play. Portland is going to grab their second win of the season and improve to 2 and 1. A big hit in open ice. As now so deflected on that, just goes wide. Second shot, and another late hit by the Flyers with 21 seconds left. Penalty oh. over. Oh. A little push and shove. A little jab like McGregor there. <laughs> From Terranova. Flyers definitely frustrated that this game is not going their way for Yeah, getting back to your question, the money line or whatever, I would take Portage now. Me too. That'd be a great bet with 21 seconds left. I think it's safe. <laughs> Hopefully the refs can keep this game under control. Barnett 21 and, seconds left. Yeah, with Barnett and Bodie in on the ice and the rest of these Portland forwards, hopefully they can just keep it calm for the next 21 seconds. They're going to say defensive zone faceoff for the Panthers. They threw a penalty on Terranova. Yeah, so the other guy is a penalty. Oh, no, he's getting out. He's leaving. So I guess it'll just be a fire power play here for the rest of this game with 21 seconds left to go. They're not pulling their goalie as of now. Just because of that, that means they lost. Let's stay neutral here, Dan, okay? I tried, Fred, I tried. <laughs> Up at the top, big hit left side on Burnett, the shot. It is blocked in the lane, 10 seconds left to go. And that is going to do it. Portland champions here at Peter Dam over the Flyers. They win it 6-2 after being down 2-1. Come back and they score five unanswered goals. Called with the hat trick, Trent, final thoughts and analysis. Yeah, it was unexpected ending to this game, or you could say expected from my previous point, how they they do know how to score quick goals, so they do move the puck well. So I think it was a great effort, a great first showing at home for Portledge, and hopefully they can continue this little win streak that they're starting now. No doubt about it, getting the win streak started, a huge win for them. Portledge wins six to two. The boys are waving to me now. The boys are saying hi. Love the boys. Love the boys. A huge win. The can you zoom in on Jake Anderson now to see if he can uh, make this handshake line without falling? Let's get that coverage. Can Jake Anderson make it? All good, Trent. Thank you so much for being with us as always. It's always a pleasure having you on the air. And that will do it for us here from Beaver Dam. The final 6-2 to two in favor of the Panthers. We'll see you next time.